Hello there, Code Monkeys. Well, it's that time again, so let's dive into another episode of Disney Direct DVDs. Disney, oh Disney, you shaped most of my childhood, yes you mean a lot to me. You know, coming off the heels of my Beauty and the Beast Enchanted Christmas review, I've been kind of thinking about what it is that irritates me about Disney Direct DVDs so much. You think I'd become desensitized to the stupidity after a while, but somehow every single Disney Direct DVD just manages to piss me off just as much as the previous one. And I think I've nailed down why. It's because they're all bad, but in different ways. The Little Mermaid 2 pissed me off because it was lazy. Beauty and the Beast Enchanted Christmas pissed me off because it was the complete antithesis of the original. And this one pisses me off because... Well, we'll get to that. So get ready for a big, hot, steaming pile of bippity-boppity bullshit as we watch Cinderella 2. So we begin in the royal palace with the two main mice from the original, Jack and Gus, hurrying along to attend story time with the fairy godmother. Yes, story time with the fairy godmother. Insert different voice actors not doing a very good job, and we're ready to get going. So they avoid the Cheshire Cat's ugly stepsister, and they find where the fairy godmother is, only to find out that they have missed story time. Maybe you could read another one. Oh, I'm sorry, Gus, but that's the only Cinderella book there is. Yeah, Gus Gus, you heard her. The end. That's all. God, I wish. Maybe we can make another book. We can tell the story and make the drawing. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. what an excellent idea. No, oh, no. Wait a minute. Who'd want to read a book made by mice? Why are sentient mice suddenly not qualified to be authors? But we don't know how to make a book. Does that mean I can leave? Don't worry, dear. I think I can help. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's gonna use her magic to help the mice make the book? That seems a little out of place to me. I was kind of under the impression from the first movie that the fairy godmother took her magic pretty seriously. She kind of gave off the vibe that magic was something that you should only use in special circumstances, that it's not something to be abused or used as a crutch. I kind of liked that interpretation. But now she's willing to use it to help the mice make a book? So what you're telling me is that she could have popped in and fixed Cinderella's entire life whenever she wanted to? There was nothing holding her back? What a bitch! Seriously, you let her spend most of her childhood, her entire adolescence, and a portion of her adult life in complete and total misery? What kind of shitty fairy godmother are you? How far are we into this movie anyway? Two minutes. We're only two minutes into this movie, and already I found something that pisses me off beyond all belief. Oh, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> Hey, bitch, that was my coat! So the mice start debating which story they want to put in the book. Wait, wait! How's about her staying castle? Oh, yeah. That is a good one. <laughs> I'd love to hear all about it. Okay, so now we get to hear about Cinderella adjusting to the royal life after her honeymoon. I swear to God, if that old man has a seizure, I am leaving. She just got back from her honeymoon. It's going to be your duty to prepare the girl. Your Majesty, I am... Dude, that was the voice of Yakko from the Animaniacs. Wheel of morality, turn, turn, turn. So the king has decided that as a grooming project, Cinderella will have to plan the royal banquet. Because I guess there's only one royal banquet per year. I don't know anything about planning a royal banquet. Oh well, at least I can stay past midnight. <laughs> Perfect. And I'll be right by your side. Am I the only one who found that incredibly suggestive? Father, I 
can't just abandon my princess. Not with the royal banquet only two days away. Nonsense! We have important matters of state to attend to. Like raising awareness about diabetes. So Cinderella goes home to the palace and goes back to her old habits of not doing anything. This was always my problem with Cinderella. Her character is just so incredibly weak. She never solves any of her own problems. She's gonna live the rest of her life as a scullery maid, so she just waits for a solution to come along. And when it does, in the form of the royal ball, she doesn't have time to tailor her dress, so the mice do it for her. When that dress gets torn and she has no way of getting to the ball, the fairy godmother comes along and fixes everything for her. And when Lady Tremaine locks her in a room, she just sits in the room crying and waiting for someone to come let her out. She's useless, she's bland, and she has absolutely everything handed to her. In other words, she's a princess. So Cinderella is making breakfast when Lady Snobbington here informs her that a princess never prepares her own meals. A princess never prepares her own meals. That is not how things are done. And this is not interesting. Couldn't I just wear one of my own dresses? Oh, very amusing, your highness. But it simply isn't done. Oh yes, very amusing indeed, darling. Delightfully droll. <laughs> it's such a beautiful day. Why don't we open the curtains? No, no, no! These curtains are never opened. And certainly not by a princess. It most definitely isn't done. Okay, we get it. The rules are oppressive and arbitrary. Can we please move this thing forward? And what is that? Norwegian stewed prunes. Prunes? For dessert? The king expects it. It is a tradition that is never broken. The rules were not made to be broken. Open the gate. No, no, no. Commoners are never allowed in the palace. Wait, 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 wait. Let me guess. It simply isn't done. It simply isn't done. I hate you. Okay, I'm just going to move things forward myself. Cinderella decides she's going to do things her own way. Something's just not right here. <laughs> like a stewed prune. Exactly, Gus. And why do they have to keep the palace so dark? And that awful dance. And those boring colors that all look the same. I'm still good! Especially those rules about keeping commoners out of the palace. Why, I was a dish maid when the prince married me. And he loves me. Because I'm me. And let's not forget the stewed prunes! I know I can do this. I just have to stop trying to be someone else. But what about the stewed prunes? I'm going to plan this banquet my way. Say the rules must say the same no. no! No, 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 no! I am not putting up with another song! It simply isn't done! It simply isn't done! Stop. Stop. Stop for the love of God! Shut up! So the king comes back and finds that everything about the banquet has been changed. <laughs> what in blazes is going on here? Your Majesty, this is all Princess Cinderella's doing. What a lovely moon. Why didn't anyone tell me that opening the curtains would let me see outside? Oh, a lotus happy! How are the others at the mustache club doing? No prunes for dessert? An absolute outrage! I told you we should have talked more extensively about the prunes! Mmm, chocolate, my favorite. Well, if chocolate is your favorite, then why have you been insisting on having prunes every year? I always said we needed some new traditions around here. Uh, Go on now, Prudence. You're missing all the fun. Hello, nurse. So everyone enjoys the banquet and the mice finish up the book. Okay, well, that was pretty bland and quite tedious, but not exactly horrible. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed this episode of Disney Direct DVDs and... I don't like that magic stuff. Remember what happened last time. Oh, uh, okay, you're not done. Continue... So now we get to hear the story of how Jack wanted to be big. And no, unfortunately, it doesn't involve a giant Godzilla-sized mouse. 
Basically, Jack feels useless because of his size and the fact that Cinderella has human servants to help her out now. So he asks the fairy godmother to turn him into a human, which she does. He finds Cinderella and tries to tell her who he is. Here, let me help you. No, no, that's why I'm here, to, to help you. I'm... Aha! The committee sent you. What? Committee? So the cat thinks that Jack is just a bunch of mice stacked up on top of each other and is still chasing him. Can I ask a question here? Why is Jack so afraid of the cats in this story? Let's rewind to the first movie. Just because Jack had the good sense to run away from Lucifer does not mean he was afraid of him. In fact, if you pay attention to how he acts, Jack is actually quite calm around Lucifer. To the point that he even offered himself up as live bait from time to time so that his friends could get past Lucifer safely. So can somebody please, please explain to me why he's suddenly developed a fear of cats in this movie? Anyone? Well, this is a prime example of the problem with most Disney Direct DVDs. The writers don't seem to care at all about the source material. Disney Direct DVDs have no regard for character continuity and are perfectly willing to completely change the traits of any given character as long as doing so ensures that they don't have to think too hard. And now you might be asking, why? Why would a movie's creators care so little about their own product? Well, it's because they're FUCKING IDIOTS! So Jack runs into a woman trying to kill the mice and he runs in to break it up. Get it? It's funny, cause she's FAT! So everything goes comedically poorly, blah blah blah, Jack has second thoughts about his decision, blah blah blah, an elephant freaks out and Jack can only stop it by becoming a mouse again and realizes he should just be himself, blah blah blah, the end. Okay, now we can leave- Remember when Anastasia fell in love? Good God, will you please just end? How long is this movie? 73 minutes? It's barely over an hour long? This thing feels like an eternity! So yeah, now we get to hear about Anastasia falling in love. Isn't this just a roller coaster of excitement, people? So Lady Tremaine and her daughters go into town to shop for some new clothes when the smell of fresh baked goods entices Anastasia into a nearby shop. Would you like one? Oh, be careful. They're hot. Anastasia! I think not. Everything in this shop is inferior. Um, why? Based on what? I mean, this seems like a pretty nice bakery to me. You're not to say a word to that shop. I forbid it. Yes, Mother. Ten points if you can guess where this is going. He's got that look. And I know that look. <laughs> okay, okay. That was pretty good. Maybe she just needs some help. And you want to help her why? I mean last time I checked she hadn't really done anything to deserve your kindness. We have to figure out how to get them together again. Why? So they devise a plan to get the two of them together, and of course it does not go well. Anastasia then spends the next several months in the hospital nursing a shattered pelvis. Only she doesn't. She runs away in humiliation and Cinderella goes to help her. What are you doing here? Dressed like that. You look like a laundry maid. I'm not the one with egg on my face. <laughs> so Cinderella takes Anastasia back to the castle for a makeover and they are closely followed by the mice and Lucifer. <laughs> Dude, what's up with Lucifer's eyes? Trust in me. So Lucifer gets rejected by Pom Pom and the mice agree to help him win her over if she promises to stop chasing them. He agrees and the makeovers begin. What I need is a whole new look. Make me look good, make me look swell. Whoa! 
Anastasia just pulled an amazing singing voice right out of her ass! I guess Drizella should have been the one playing the flute. So after Anastasia gets her new aerial hair, she still has a few concerns. But what if Mother catches me? She told me never to speak to the baker again! Maybe it's time to stop following someone else's orders and start following your heart. <sighs> start following your heart. I can't believe she actually said that. So the next day, everyone embarks on their plans. But Anastasia sees the baker talking to a friend of his, and she thinks that he's interested in the other girl instead of her. Anastasia runs off in tears, so let's see how Lucifer is doing. So, now that their plan has worked, do you think Lucifer's going to keep up his end of the bargain? Well, do ya? Come on! Guess! Yeah, what a shocker. And here's another big surprise. Anastasia and the baker get together, Lady Tremaine doesn't approve, and Anastasia learns to stop listening to her mother. These messages are so ham-fisted you can make bacon out of them. Thank you. I never dreamed I could be this happy. Oh, you I see? Know. Dreams do come true. Ah! So they finally finish the book, and Russ just showed it to Cinderella. I don't suppose you'd want to read this together, would you? Yeah! <laughs> Oh no, don't start over! Once upon a time, there was a big castle. And in this castle... Oh my god, it's never going to end! Please, somebody save me from this movie! Good god, this sucked! I mean, talk about pointless. This movie is cripplingly insubstantial. Nothing about it is engaging or necessary, and it serves as nothing more than forgettable, worthless padding. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed this episode of Disney Direct DVDs. Make sure to come back next time, and until then, I have some very important prune-related business to attend to. Hello there, Code Monkeys. Entropy the Compassionate Supervillain here. You know, Jesse designed this costume specifically for me, but I'm not the only one who can get in on the festivities. Now you can have your very own Entropy the Compassionate Supervillain t-shirt by going to printfection.com slash jessieswaglocker. Your number one source for all Coded Lock Films merchandise, such as the Entropy the Compassionate Supervillain t-shirt and Death to the Crab, as well as many other fantastic designs that Jesse comes up with in his spare time. So check the link in the doobly-doo and head on over to Jesse's Swag Locker for all your Coded Lock Films merchandise needs.